Yeah, I guess uh, me and Mikey are here just to talk about what's going on, what's a real, what the real thing is that's going on in the restaurant industry still. Um, I'm not sure if people are really fully aware of, of where we're at still two years later after COVID hit. Um, we're still not out of the clear. Um, most restaurants aren't. We're battling a lot of things like staffing issues, uh, supply chain, price increases, um, Wisconsin, cold weather. I mean, that's a typical normal thing for us um, in this industry right now. But it's rough and it's not easy for a lot of the restaurants out there. All of them are struggling. Um, and I guess I just wanted to bring some light to that subject and you know, make sure that people really still are aware of, of what is happening out there. I mean, yeah, still just a lot of the same short-staffed. Um, wait times are a little longer. Um, some of the liquor things are still, it's becoming, I think, a little better. But every once in a while, there's certain liquor you can't get. Um, you know, and then in general, even when, when they do get it back in, big box retailers get priority. So sometimes even when they do get stock back in, maybe you're able to grab a couple bottles, but then the next time you want more, it's all gone again because... Yep, the restaurants get shafted, they're on second tier. Big box retailers, you know, buy in bulk. They may buy for, you know, months worth or even quarters worth, depending on, on how they go about buying, you know, to get deeper deals so that they can give sales to their customers. I mean, it makes sense. But uh, sometimes that leaves us kind of in a, in a bind, especially, like you said, going into the winter months here in Wisconsin and uh, January, February, March being uh, kind of the slower months for this industry, uh, at least here in Wisconsin. Um, so you try and run your inventory a little tighter, you know, to not have so much inventory in hand when things aren't as busy, and then you come up against the wall if you need something, and the distributors are out of it now because of whether it's bottle shortages. Um, sometimes it's a matter of, I mean, obviously, supply chain with trucking. If it's an import uh, liquor or something, obviously it could be stuck somewhere further down the line. Um, I've had several instances where I've just gotten a text or a call from my rep that, hey, uh, you're not gonna get your order this week. It's not gonna be till next week. Um, it's loaded, it's on a truck, we have it. We don't have a driver to deliver it to you. So those are just things that you know randomly pop up. And so you work your way around them the best you can. Have to be able to pivot and change at any given moment. I mean, luckily, I'm, you know, that end, I mean, usually people have a reserve drink or two, you know, they're, they're not, you know, most drinkers will, oh, you're out of that, well, I, can, I can do this, you know, but. Yeah, but it's I not. I mean, for a while, it was some of the, the, the big things. I mean, this is going back a ways, of, like Coors Light couldn't get that in a bottle for a long time. I mean, like of all, of all things, that's like a staple, you know, like some of the basics. That, seemed, that, that has seemed to get gotten better. You know, now it's just more your random, like I think, and the last thing is Palm Bay Sapphire. Well, that's imported, and, you know, couldn't get that for six, seven weeks, something like that. It definitely is. I mean, I would think most people are seeing it. I mean, I don't go to the grocery store that often. You probably don't either. <laughs> um, but I mean, you can tell in the grocery stores, but I mean, for commercial wise, it's hitting us hard. Um, you know, during the height of the pandemic, it was paper products is what was really the hard thing and rubber gloves, obviously. Um, we're not having those supply chain issues anymore. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anymore. What's really happening now at this point is it's been a big issue with like availability with meats and seafoods and the cost just going through the roof. Um, so if you th see things on restaurants menus that are changing, most likely it's because A, they either can't get it or B, the prices increase it so much that there's no way we can put that on a plate for you. Um, like for us, in instance, I mean, obviously I have precinct before that, I had Cafe Surrett. I've had crab cakes on my menu for like 16 years. I just recently had to take them off. Our crab tripled in cost. There's no way I can put three two and a half ounce crab cakes on a plate and try to get someone to pay me forty dollars for it. It's not going to happen, um, and that's where we're at. Meat prices, obviously, I think people see that in the grocery stores, but that's hitting us hard as well. Um, and availability on that, like this week, my sous chef Kyle, he spends a lot of time like going through um, our orders and looking at pricing, and we're having to substitute and change things weekly, which is normal for us. Um, we like to change things up. But now it's not becoming because we want to in our creativity, we're being forced to because there's no way that we can put that, either we can't get that product or we can't put that product out for you for a reasonable price. What I feel comfortable is a reasonable price for our guests. Um, so like this week we couldn't get pork tenderloin, so our pork dish is gonna be switched up to a pork loin instead. Um, 
so it's just ever constant that we're having to look at those things and see what's happening with it and, and get creative. Um, and I feel bad for some of those restaurants that are more, you know, maybe they're getting more convenience products, things like that, that they just plainly can't get. Um, and convenience products, I mean, you know, like french fries or potato skins or things like that. Um, though there's issues with all of that stuff still too. So I feel bad for those restaurants that, you know, they can't get what's probably been on their menu for 20 years. Um, and I think that you're seeing more, I, I feel as though we're seeing more restaurants close in the last like four to five months than even during the height of the pandemic, which is kind of what you said a long time ago. Well, and some of that's the, uh, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people said now it's just a staffing issue, you know, when you're talking about getting hit with expenses, uh, um, obviously on the products, but you know, we see, you see in all these articles, wages going up, wages going up, people offering more sign on bonuses, you know, so you're getting hit as a business in this industry with higher costs to produce your product, sometimes so high that you can't even pass along to customers because you know your customer base is not going to pay that amount and you're going to try and keep up with raising, raging wages so you can get you know, people in the door and get staff and get people. So you're racing against that. So you're kind of getting hit from every which direction, you know. Like we'll get somebody in and then they'll be here for a little bit or maybe their old job or maybe a new job or they might keep looking and they're, they're here for a short period of time. It's short lived, which for me, being in business for how many years, I really prided myself for a lot of years on having longevity with employees. And the core crew that we have here, I mean, I thank goodness every day for them because we would not still be here and doing what we're doing without the like core, core of five or six of us. Um, because the rest, it's kind of like a rotating door. And you do what you do and you hope you got them for a couple weeks. And But you know, it takes time to train people and trying to you know get them acclimated to what they need to be doing and hope that they're the right fit. And times they've gone a lot sooner than you want so you know for years I mean we would have employees that stuck around and the restaurant industry is a high turnover rate to begin with even pre-pandemic but now it's even worse and we always prided ourselves on having longevity with our employees and it's just it's the core crew yeah but the rest it's not there anymore.